Hey everyone, welcome back to The Joy of Editing. I'm your host, Dave Kelly. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to make adaptive sky and foreground presets in Lightroom Classic. These presets will help you quickly and easily enhance the sky and foreground of your landscape photos. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. On today's Lightroom Classic tutorial, I want to show you how to make adaptive presets for skies and foregrounds, which will really speed up your Lightroom workflow. It's really simple and easy to do. Let me show you how. If you look at the left side of my Lightroom Classic interface, you'll notice I have adaptive foreground. This is a group and I have a couple presets in here. This one's called less saturated. And as I hover over these, you can see what's happening. This one's called warm and detailed. And then for adaptive sky, I have moody sky and you can see the change and warm drama, which is really nice. And I also started to make some adaptive sky and foreground presets where it gets them both at once. And as I hover over this, you can see what that's doing. And you'll also notice the presets that come with Lightroom Classic, they do give you some adaptive sky presets. Like here's one called Blue Drama, Dark Drama, Neon Tropics, Storm Clouds, Sunrise, and Sunset. I'll show you how to make these adaptive presets and we'll make them using the new masking tools inside of Lightroom Classic. You just click this button right here and here you can select a subject, sky or a background. We can use range masks, linear gradients, so on and so forth. But today I'm mainly interested in the sky selection. And with the sky selection, we can make sky adaptive presets and then we can invert the sky and create foreground adaptive presets. It's really cool, it's really easy to do, and it'll really speed up your workflow. By the way, a quick and easy way to get out of the masking is just click on this icon right here and it'll take you right back to editing. One nice thing I really love about these adaptive presets, if we click on one of these like blue drama, you see here we have this amount slider. Now with this slider, we can increase the amount or decrease it. So we have a lot of nice adjustment here. So we, it defaults at 100%, but then if that's too much, we can drag it back a little bit, or if it's not enough, we can drag it to the right, which makes it really super handy. Now, right now I'm at 130 and that's way too much. So I can either double click on the adjustment slider or double click on a mount and reset that back to 100. If you click on this masking icon, you can see there's that blue drama mask right there. And if I click right here, you can see it has a sky selection inside it. And then if you open up the different um, adjustment groups here, like tone, we can see if they did anything with tone. They haven't done anything with tone. If I open up color, you can see that they've taken the temperature and drug it to the left to a minus 10, made it more blue. And if we open up presence, we can see that they've used clarity and dehaze. I want you to notice something here. You see this preset amount right here? And you'll notice we also have an amount right here. If I were to drag this preset slider to the right, and I'm gonna drag it over to like say around 146, you notice this preset amount has also went with it, so they work together. And also note, if I double click right here, this goes back to 100, and this goes back to 100 over here. So they do work together. But once you have a preset, you can come and make adjustments. For instance, I could come up here to tone and pull back the exposure. And it's only dealing with the sky because if we look at this mask, it's only dealing with that sky. But you could come here and come into color and say you want it even more blue, take the temperature and drag it more to the left. Or if you want to warm it up, you can drag it to the right. So once you get a preset, there's no saying that you can't go in there and alter things. You can alter any of these adjustments here. Now let's go ahead and make an adaptive preset. I don't need this preset anymore, so I'm gonna click these three dots and I could either click on delete blue drama or delete all masks. Either way, I don't want any masks on here because I wanna start from scratch. Let me start out by going back to edit. So click this icon and you can see all my edits on here. To make our preset, what we would do is click on this icon to go into the masking mode. I'll be making a sky adaptive preset, so what I'll do is click on sky, and then Lightroom will find our sky for us. Now right now, you're seeing a black on white overlay, 
and you can see show overlay and I have this checked on. If you click on these three dots, you have different ways that you can see the mask. You can do a color overlay, image on black and white, image on black, whatever you want. I like to use the white on black. But now all we need to do is start making some adjustments. And before I do that, I'm going to give you a little tip. You see this mask right here? It's called Mask 1. That's what Lightroom Classic named it. If you double click it, you can rename it. I recommend that you call it the same name that you're going to call your preset. I'm going to call mine Dramatic Sky because what I want to do is make a Dramatic Sky preset and I'm going to click OK. And the reason I'm doing that is I found out that Lightroom, whenever they make an adaptive preset, they always name the mask the same as the preset because it kind of helps you here. Rather than seeing Mask 1 here, you know that you've used that Dramatic Sky preset. So that's a nice little tip for you. Okay, we see this overlay here, but as soon as I start to make an adjustment here in any one of these groups, this overlay will go away. I want to make a dramatic sky preset, so I'm going to start out with presence. So I'm just going to click on presence. And what I'm going to do first is work with dehaze because I find if you want a nice dramatic sky, dehaze is a really good one for you. So I'm going to take my dehaze slider and start to drag it to the right. And you can see the drama start to build. And I think I'll take it to right here at 38. And then what I'll do is add a little bit of clarity to that as well. And I think I'll take it up to like 35. And already we have a nice bit of drama going here. Now let's come to color. And the reason I'm using color is because dehaze has added a lot of blue here. So I want to neutralize that a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to hover over temperature and I'm going to use my up arrow so I don't go too crazy here. I'm going to click it once. That goes to one. Slightly warmer. Here's two. Here's three. I think I'll take it to a three. I don't want it to go too warm because if I go too warm, it's going to look too yellow. And I'm not looking for that look. But I just want a nice dramatic sky. And that's really all I'm going to do. And now what I want to do is turn this into an adaptive preset. And it's really simple to do. Come over to the left side of Lightroom's interface and click... Make sure you have your presets opened up and click on the plus and click on create preset. Now you want to give your preset a name. I'm calling mine dramatic sky. And right now it's in a group called user presets. And you can see here's my user presets right here. But also notice I made myself a group called adaptive sky. So if we come here on the drop down and click right here, you can see here's my adaptive sky and I'll click on adaptive sky and now it'll put it inside of that group. Now, if you want to make a new group, all you need to do is click that drop down again and click on new group and you could make yourself a group and give it a name, whatever you want to call it, adaptive sky, so on and so forth, anything. But mine's going in this group called adaptive sky. Now, this is very important. You see all these checks here for all the different uh, adjustments I have on this image here. I don't want any of these turned on. So what I'm going to do is check none. Nothing is selected. Here's all you need to do. And it's this simple. Click right here where it says masking and it will select that dramatic sky. If you had a couple different masks in here, just check on the one that says dramatic sky. And then make sure you have support amount slider checked on. That would be that slider right there. You want to make sure you have that set on. That way you can add more of the effect or less of the effect. Very important. And now all you need to do is click create. And now you'll notice I have a new preset called dramatic sky inside of that group adaptive sky. Now let me do this. Let me go ahead and get rid of this dramatic sky by clicking the three dots and delete all masks. Say for instance, I'm starting out in this image and I'm looking for the right sky. So I can click over here's dramatic sky. Here's moody sky and here is warm drama. So I like dramatic sky. So I'll click on it. And now with this amount slider, all I need to do is, if I want it stronger, drag it to the right. If I don't want it as strong, I can drag it to the left, which is really nice. Now, let me double click it. Let me go ahead and delete this again because I want to show you something. So I'm going to delete all masks. Let's go back to editing. If you're just selecting a sky, you don't even need to go into masks here. This is really nice. If I want to use dramatic sky, I'll click on it. And now I've added it. And now, again, I could add more of the effect by dragging the slider to the right or less to the left. And once I get it where I like it, say I like it around 85, 
I don't even have to go in here to masking unless I want to go in and make some readjustments. So now you could go and start building yourself a bunch of adaptive sky presets and then you can just kind of sample those out on your different landscape images and find something that you really like. It'll really speed up your workflow. It takes a little bit of time to make up your presets, but once you got them made, it is a real time saver. Now let me show you how to make a foreground adaptive preset. So let's click on the mask icon. Now I have the dramatic sky preset here. Let me click on the plus to create a new mask and let's click on select sky and our sky is selected. But that's not what we want. We want the foreground. All we need to do is click the three dots and click invert mask one. And now we have the foreground and now we can build that preset. I just want to make a very simple preset. And for this preset, I just want a simple preset in case I want to make my foregrounds to be not quite as warm, but just slightly on the cooler side. So what I'll do is open up color. It's already opened here. And I'm just going to drag my temperature back to the left to maybe somewhere, I don't know, maybe right around like minus 19. Now, if you click this eye right here, you can see here's the before and here's the after. But you see how that has really cooled down that foreground. Now, Imagine I could make another preset if I wanted foregrounds warmer. I could take the temperature slider and drag it to the right to make a warmer foreground. So you could have yourself a bunch of different presets to kind of like tweak your image and do it with presets, which is kind of nice. Now let's save this as a preset, as an adaptive preset. So it's this mask one. So I'm going to double click this and give it a new name. I'm going to call it Cool FG for Cool Foreground and click OK. I like to rename the mask and then we need to save it as a preset. So come over to the presets and click on the plus click on create preset. And I'm going to call this cool foreground FG. Now, remember we need to put it in a group right now. It's going to go into a group called adaptive sky. I don't want that. So click the drop down, and I have a group called adaptive foreground. So I'm going to click that. And remember, if you need to make a new group, just click the drop down again and click on new group and give it a name. I'm going to click on check none. I don't want anything selected here. I'm going to click on cool foreground. So click on that. That puts a check there and then make sure support amount slider is checked on and it should go on whenever you click this. All that's left for me to do is click create. And when I do, you notice now I have a new preset called cool foreground. And so there it is. So whenever I need a cool foreground, I can just click on that preset and then I can adjust its amount as well. And just for the heck of it, let me get rid of this preset by clicking delete cool foreground. And now well, let's hover over cool foreground and you can see the effect it's give me. And I may say, yeah, you know what? I like that. So I'll click on it. I may say I want more. So I'll drag this to the right, make it cooler, or I don't want it quite as cool. I'll drag it the whole way to the left and just start to build it up a little bit. But you see how nice this can be to really speed up a workflow so you can have different presets doing different things, cooling foregrounds, increasing vibrance, um, shifting the tint, warming things up with temperatures, and you can do different things. You may just want to target green tones in the foreground. So you can make presets, adaptive presets for all these things, which is really a powerful and efficient way of editing your images right here inside of Lightroom Classic. Well, there it is, everyone. Adaptive presets, sky and foreground. You can have adaptive presets for subjects. And I made one for sky and foreground all with one preset. So you could do different things as the sky is the limit, as they say. So give it a try. Hey, if you enjoyed the tutorial today, Give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.